Okay, I'm really happy to be here and to be speaking in honor of Aravind. Uh, my talk is going to be entirely reminiscence, and I wanted to talk about the characteristics um, that I found in Aravind as an advisor that really helped me as I went through the program. So the three main themes, but I'll come up with more of them as I go through, are first, independence. So he really allowed me to work um, independently and uh, gave me a lot of freedom as I went through. And given my personality, which was stubborn, uh, <laughs> this, was, this was a good strategy. Um, he also f facilitated introductions, and I think watching how he did team building as I went through was um, important for me. So uh, when I decided to come to Penn uh, and I, I, I visited, I s spent some time speaking with Aravind, and then um, Aravind sent me down into the basement where all the PhD students were at that point in time, and he found... Uh, the best person to speak to me. And, you know, this was a good strategy. It was somebody who, who could speak for him and uh, really, I think, was uh, the one who convinced me to come. That's David Rosenthal, who is a vision person. This is a picture of him now. He didn't look like that then. <laughs> um, but he was, he was a very sort of friendly person, and he said to me, if you want to work in natural language processing, Aravind is the best in the world. And not only is he the best in the world in his field, he's also the best to work with. He's, you know, kind, easy to get along with, and supportive. So uh, after talking with him, that was it. I was sure I was coming to Penn. And uh, that was a strategy that I, I, I could see worked well. So later in my um, time at Penn, I played that role. He would ask me to go to lunch with him and a new student to talk to the new student about coming to Penn. And I use that strategy now with my students. So when I have someone coming in, it's like my, my students can speak for me best. So when I came, um, <laughs> I was put in the black room. We were, uh, we were uh, assigned a team, and the leader of our team was um, S. Gerald Kaplan. This is a picture of him. Again, I couldn't get them quite as far back as um, the time, but as you'll see, it's a little bit different than how he looks now. <laughs> Uh, there were four of us who went in that room, and I couldn't actually remember the fourth person, but uh, Bruce, Bruce Kaufman, Tom Williams, possibly Steve Platt. And this was one of the few pictures I could get of me during that time. I'm in Halloween costume as Dorothy. Uh, so at any rate, we were put in a room uh, separate. We were not in the basement with everybody else. We were put in a room uh, just across the hall from Aravind. And um, there were two reasons for that. One was to put us together as a team so we could work together on um, a project that Jerry uh, was developing. And it also put us very close to Aravind. Um, but this room uh, was also made a big impression on me. Uh, we could decorate it as we want because it was empty when we came in, so that was fun. Uh, but it had no windows, and it was painted black. <laughs> so this, this was where I spent my uh, first year at Columbia, <laughs> at, I mean at Penn. Um, around that time, I think it was the first summer of my first year there, uh, I went to my first conference, which was uh, TinLab. Uh, it was at the University of Illinois, and uh, we got there in a van so that we could take more of us. So we all piled into a van, which, as I remember, did not have seats. So we were often on the <laughs> floor. My memory has it that Aravin was with us in the van, but looking back, I'm not actually sure that that was the case. <laughs> and in order to enable all of us to go... Um, we, we were asked to share a room in the dorm, so there were dorms that were set up for students. The problem was I was the only woman in the group. <laughs> so the question was, where was I going to go? <laughs> but 
the end, I got my own room. So this is part of Aaron, uh, Aravin um, facilitating things for his students to enable them to go. Uh, in the, that first year or so that I was here, I worked on uh, the project that uh, Jerry was working on. So again, as I said, this was a team project. The system was called co-op, and um, we were working on cooperative question answering. And each of us was assigned a sort of task in the overall pro project. And mine was to be able to paraphrase the question that we got as input. Um, and this turned out to be a good project for me. Um, it led to uh, my first paper in 1979, which was on paraphrasing using given and new information in a question answering system. And um, so this was an early ACL. Uh, the room was probably about the size of, of people here. I prepared for the talk with many practice talks with Aravind and uh, other students. I had index cards for everything I was going to say, and the slides were generated by our graphics system. Uh, I was taking computer graphics at the time, and that's how people did the slides. Um, I, I mentioned this paper because it illustrates um, both the independence that Aravind gave us and also a regret on my part. Uh, so this was a sole authored paper. And um, at the time, it didn't really, you know, it's very, it didn't really even occur to me that it, you know, how this should go. You know, it was sort of, as I saw it, my, my work. And Aravin never said, oh, let's, let's do this paper together. And this, this sort of indicated, you know, how he was. You know, it was, he, I guess, as uh, Rajiv said, he gave space. So this was a sort of space he gave to me. Um, but it's also a regret on my part because I, um, I, I didn't have many uh, co-authored papers with Aravin, and it's something that I regret at this point in time. Um, and so, Aravind, if you decide to spend some time at Columbia, let's, uh, do, let's do a paper together. <laughs> okay, so one of the first things uh, that I had to do when I, at Penn, so this was sort of following my um, initial master's work, every, every year we had the natural language seminar, and in the seminar we read papers, and we had to... Each person had a paper, had to report on the paper, and then there was discussion. And I was assigned Barbara Gross's thesis. Um, so this was uh, lengthy, and um, I, I spent quite a bit of time, you know, going through it to try to understand all the details. To, and I was, as a new student, petrified that I, you know, was having to present this in, in front of the group. Uh, but it led to... Um, I would say, you know, an interest in, in my part, certainly in, in Barbara's work, but an interest in Aravind's part in sort of the, the presentation in, um, you know, in, in, in Barbara's work and, and sort of it, it led to sort of a three-way um, collaboration or not so much collaboration but friendship over the years. So this was part of what I saw Aravind doing as an advisor, facilitating introductions and creating sort of lifelong um, friendships and interactions. Uh, some of the other introductions that he made um, during that time, and again, it's, a, you know, as a graduate student in the basement that, you know, you'd be working for the day and suddenly I would hear Martin Kay is visiting and I'd like him to come and talk to you about the work that you're doing on uh, functional unification formalism. And again, you know, sort of this petrifying feeling of he's going to come into my office and talk to me, and this is the, you know, the big person that I've read about and heard about, and now I'm going to have to talk to him face to face. But this, this again, was the sort of thing that um, Aravind facilitated. And you see here a picture of... Aravind, Susan, Eva Hayachova, and Peter Segal, and myself. This was, I believe, at um, the Montreal ACL um, 
I think it was, I'm pretty sure this was it, where uh, there was not enough food for dinner. So this, <laughs> this is a picture of us afterwards. And a few others of the people that he introduced me to at that time, which um, were so important as I, I went on in my career. Okay, so um, my own research topic for my PhD, as, as Bonnie said, it was in text generation. It sort of spun out of the work I had done for my master's thesis in terms of what my interests were. And, um, you know, again, it sort of showed me in working with my students later a way to go, you know, start people early with a very concrete project, interests come out of it, and you make your own decisions as you go forward. So I was working with text generation, again, with database interfaces, and sort of open-ended question answering. And the open-ended question answering turns out to be something that I've kept up with all along. We work on it now, no longer with databases, but um, with the web. And this uh, was a bit of a new field for Aravind. So again, it's sort of um, something that he was generous and gave me my independence to go ahead. This is something that you're interested in. But at the same time, he, you know, inserted his influence, the kinds of things that he introduced me to, uh, which were the global focus in the reading of Barber's thesis, uh, local focus in the reading of Candy's work, and what later came out as centering, but was not there yet as, as when I was doing my work. Um, so, <laughs> with the team building, um, as I started uh, my dissertation, it, it was uh, my turn. So, um, he did the same sort of thing. He assigned me to a group when I came that I worked as part of a team. And as I was beginning my dissertation and Kathy McCoy came in, he assigned Kathy McCoy to work with me. Again, this was a form of connections because uh, Kathy was a student of Arabin's student, Ra Ralph Weisheidel. And I remembered, you know, being impressed at that point, you know, sort of how it went where Arabin said, uh, you know, Ralph really highly recommends Kathy. And so, you know, Kathy was coming in and it's sort of that, you know, the connections are important and the recommendations of people that you know are important and make a difference. So this was a team that, you know, we continued uh, throughout the time that I was there at, at Penn and was uh, very important, I would say, to my happiness there. So Kathy and I had uh, weekly meetings with Aravin. We would go to Aravin's office and... Uh, Hope you don't mind, Aravind, but the usual question was, <laughs> where is Aravind? <laughs> so uh, we would get there, we would sit, we would talk about our work, we would, Aravind was chair at the time, and um, <laughs> we, would, we would say, hmm, well, let's see, how long should we wait? And then, <laughs> then we would go and talk to his assistant, and, and she would look around and the usual thing was, oh, he's wandering the halls. He's <laughs> wandering the halls talking to somebody. He was chair, so, you know, he, he, he had to be out there talking to people. Um, but that sort of um, ability, you know, that feeling of being able to go in and um, present our work to him and get feedback, it was just a feeling of to die for, you know. We, w we waited that time in between meetings. It was like, it felt like a long time. And, and again, it's something that, you know, I think of with my students, how um, much I cared about being able to do that presentation and get feedback. Uh, and then um, Bonnie Weber arrived. So when I was first there, Aravind was uh, the only person in um, natural language processing. And um, when, when Bonnie came in, again, one of the things that I, I remember is Aravind's um, generosity and sort of bringing her in, um, involving her as part of the group. Um, of course, she had her own directions and ways she wanted to go, um, but he also, you know, brought her in as part of the work that was ongoing and that we were doing. So um, I think, believe Eric Mays began to work with her, 
And at some point, um, we did a, a joint paper, which, which um, Aravin sort of handed to Bonnie to organize, and uh, she brought the group together. And, you know, again, this was sort of, this was a great experience when, when he did this. It was, I could see the bringing in of people, the being gener generous in how, how it was done, the, um, how I felt about it, about being excited to be part of it, and, um, and I'm sure how, how Bonnie felt about it as a, as a new professor there. Uh, so not only did um, Aravin make introductions uh, <clears throat> outside of Penn, but also many introductions and <clears throat> interactions were going on within Penn. So uh, it was not just computer science. We were, uh, even at that point in time, taking courses from people across the university. So we were, and we were encouraged to do that. Uh, so my first linguistics course was with Ivan Sog, um, who, who later went to um, Stanford. Ellen Prince was very much part of my early time there with, I think, mostly informal, but again, Aravind encouraging it and us getting together, and she served on my dissertation committee, Scott Weinstein in uh, philosophy. And uh, later, Tony came only after I was, was there for a while. Um, other kinds of, of team building that happened during uh, this time, this, this was, again, sort of the very beginning, I think, and uh, where cognitive science, the whole team building of a cognitive science effort at, at Penn began. And there were several events that happened during this time that made a big impression on me. Um, one was a, a workshop that um, I probably Aravind and Bonnie organized together, um, it was on discourse in NLP, and I can't remember everybody that was there. I do remember um, Barbara and Candy, I think Rachel Reitman, who was one of um, Bill Wood's students. And I, I remember very much the topics that were so exciting to me, and if we look back, were so different from what we deal with today because they were, um, you know, it was it was really discourse, and it was... Uh, linguistics, and there was no statistics. <laughs> <laughs> but um, some of those topics, we, we were looking at um, conversations between airline pilots and co-pilots and, you know, sort of the, um, you know, what problems they had communicating before landing. Uh, we were looking at uh, the work, I think this was uh, Charlotte Lindy of um, how people described apartment buildings and their layouts, how they, how they walked through them. And um, a big uh, topic at that time was the difference between referential and attributive uh, reference. And um, this, again, was very exciting to me. Um, and in fact, I used it later in my ACL presidential address uh, when I played Sleeping Beauty. Um, this was also uh, the first, I think, towards the end of my time there that we had a, a joint seminar that Aravind and Lila Gleitman um, organized. And it was a very small seminar. It was mostly uh, faculty, as I remember. And uh, we would walk, I usually walk with Aravind from the computer science department down to the psychology department where we had the seminar. And uh, it was just, you know, one of those things that was, again, so exciting, you know, kind of new work and new ideas, things I wasn't so familiar with. And, um, and I think it was uh, the beginning of a very big team-building effort that um, Aravind did. Now, getting towards the end of my time, this was Again, I think like really the building of the NLP program as more and more people came in. And I remember a site visit for a major grant. And it was really the first time that this happened when I was there. I'm not sure what grant it was. I believe it was NSF, but it was, it was very large and they really wanted to get it. And it was the first time that I saw that Aravin was nervous. <laughs> I, I don't think I ever saw him nervous other than that, so I knew this was important. <laughs> and um, one of the, 
highlights that we were doing was demos, and I had to do a demo of my system and was so impressed upon that this had to work. <laughs> of course, when we saw who was the reviewer, you could understand <laughs> why Aravin was, was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure there was a team, but you know he was he was one of the ones who was there. So um, as I left Penn, I saw uh, more team building going on. Um, he brought in uh, Tim Finan, uh, Mitch Marcus. Mitch, I think, joined as I left, so I was never here when he was here. Oh, more women, which for me was really exciting to see that happen. Um, a female postdoc, Martha Palmer, who uh, I remember Kathy and I were like so impressed when she came in. We wanted to go talk to her. And uh, more women graduate students, so Julia Hirschberg, Martha Pollack. I overlapped with them for a year, and I was, I was always sorry that I didn't have more time. So I, I wanted to sort of stress the main characteristics of Erevin that had an impact on me, um, you know, the independence, the introduction, and the team building, but, but there were more that I saw, you know, as I was here. One was peacemaker and negotiator. As department chair, he was great at it. I, I, I can remember um, attending a faculty meeting as a student representative where I was presenting something that the students were unhappy with. And uh, I, uh, it was, you know, I faced a firewall. And, and Aravind is, you know, calm, great sort of negotiating, making sure I was protected as a student and that my ideas got through. Um, so that kind of thing really impressed me, you know, being able to negotiate, maintaining your calm in the face of everything. But he's also uh, fun-loving. So uh, here is a picture of that uh, Kathy McCoy gave me at the user modeling, one of the early user modeling conferences with the people there. And on the next slide, I'll show you who's who. Um, but I, I, can, I was not at this one, but I can remember others. So, for example, the language generation workshops, which were always small, and we had so much fun at them. And I remember one on Catalina Island where at night we had, you know, a bonfire, and we were down by the water around a bonfire and singing, and, and mostly graduate students. But there's Aravin right there <laughs> with the rest of this. And, of course, all of us know it. Space cadet. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's like, uh, aren't we all space cadets? You know, it's the way we can think and, um, yeah, sort of brainstorm. But we have to have that spacey characteristic. Um, and then, you know, despite that spaciness, when, uh, you know, the wisdom and the insight comes through above all, again, I remember him visiting at, at Columbia he was on a PhD dissertation, and we, we, I asked if he would give a talk, and he, he hadn't brought slides, and um, he sort of looked like, oh, oh, you want me to give a talk? And it's like, uh oh, you know, is he, is he going to be? And he stood up at the board, and everything came out, and it was, again, like just totally amazing, and, and every, everyone impressed. So... Aravind is still my advisor. I tell all my students I will also be their advisor because that's how I think of Aravind. Uh, when I need advice, I call. I always remember his calm, and I make use of his team building. So in building my own research group, I think, I think of him and the kind of hiring that I did as chair. I remember the hiring that uh, he did. And in starting the Institute for Data Science and Engineering, which I'm doing now, where, where there will be something that comes out of nothing, I think of his work with IRCS, and in fact, I need to talk to him more. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs>